Today we will be discussing the feeding of grain and grain supplements to dairy cows on pasture. And today we're at the farm of Bob and Alex Tumalovich here in Norwich, New York, near New Berlin, Shenango County. And with us will be Dave Balbian, uh, the area dairy and field crop specialist for Cornell Cooperative Extension. Today we're talking about uh, supplementing cows with uh, grain while they're on pasture. And uh, I, I guess I would say, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us kind of what your strategy is or policy is as far as grain feeding and maybe how it's changed in the last year or two. Basically, I stay the same. I grain my cows. I switch the protein when it comes time for grass, different protein in the winter, and basically I keep everything simple. When the cows need a little feed, I'll stick it outside by the water trough. Like in the early spring, I'll put some dry hay or dry baleage out there to help their stomach to do the changes. But basically, we get down into a 14% grain. Okay, so basically you lower the protein. Lower the protein. Provide a little bit of dry hay. Right. Um, or drier baleage. Yeah, yeah. Here's a, here's a pasture stick, and if you were to look closely on it, it, it kind of shows an area here six to eight inches in height of where we ideally like to graze this, uh, this grass uh, for dairy cattle. Um, and if we're harvesting feed as a hay crop, whether it be haylage, baleage, uh, we, we really can't afford to go out there when there's such little quantity there. Uh, we always are harvesting it at a higher height, and, and the quality that you're going to get off of this stuff uh, as pasture when it's managed this way at six to eight inches is going to be far superior than any, any uh, harvested feed that you're ever going to be able to be able to justify. However, there's one, I guess when you think about the quality of that feed, typically it's pretty high in protein, depending on what the makeup is, especially if there's some clover in there, if it's gotten a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer or manure, the protein is going to be pretty high. Uh, I've seen at times uh, pasture samples where the protein has been as high as 30%, uh, but it's often 20 to 25% protein. Um, uh, pretty, very, very digestible, but the, but the one thing that's really lacking is carbohydrates. It's just, when you think about grasses, clovers, anything of that nature, that's just not the kind of a, a, a feedstuff that it is. So when we think about supplementing these cows with grain, that's really kind of the major nutrient that we're looking to provide. And it can come from a variety of different grains. I mean, the most common thing it's gonna come from is corn, uh, whether it be high moisture corn, and you guys don't deal with high moisture corn, you don't really grow any corn no, of your own. No corn. Uh, but it can be cornmeal, and it could be even some other cereal grains in there, but in this part of the country, typically corn is, is, is going to be the feed of choice. It's pretty high price now, uh, but uh, typically it's kind of the, uh, the best choice out there. Um, and depending on what else is being fed uh, with it, um, you know, we certainly can lower the protein down in that feed. Uh, and you're feeding, you said, a 14, 14. 14 and uh, some people will drop it even lower than that. Um, one of the things I guess I would say is that what, what producers can do to kind of monitor the efficiency of, uh, of uh, protein usage in their diet and, and how effectively uh, cows are using, um, you know, digesting their diet and utilizing it for milk production is to look at the MUN values, what we call milk urea nitrogen. Ideally, we'd like to see those values in the 8 to 12 range. Um, if the forage is primarily pasture, really well managed, oftentimes it's pretty tough to get down there. Uh, we may be able to get down to 13 or 14, which isn't too too awful bad. Um, now let me uh, let me ask. Uh, I'll ask I'll ask you, Alex, um, if you uh, uh, needed to feed some additional forage, what would be the forage of your choice? Baleage. Baleage. Okay. All right. That'd be the same for you. To do it affordable and to make money, baleage. Okay, all right. And I guess from a nutritional standpoint, the one thing, remember what I, I said a little bit earlier from the standpoint of the cows needing carbohydrates. And, and baleage basically is, is, can be similar to your pasture. It's going to be more mature, and it's not really going to have a lot of carbohydrates in there. So depending on how the farm is really kind of organized, what the rest of the cropping system is, um, you know, baleage in, in your case is probably the best thing to do. Now for some folks who are also growing some corn, right. Corn silage can be a great complement nutritionally yeah, uh, to pasture if, if the pasture doesn't supply en enough total forage uh, for the cows. Because remember, half of that dry matter in, in corn silage is going to be corn grain. And it's pretty digestible because it's soft 
And, and if we have pasture that's 25 or 30 percent protein, what it also does is it dilutes that protein down a little bit. So it really is a good complement. And, and that's not for everybody, uh, but it's certainly uh, for folks who are growing corn, that's a, and, and they need some additional forage. The pasture just, they got too many animals for the acres they have. Uh, some corn silos can be kind of a great complement to that, to that pasture. So now, now uh, so you're feeding grain basically twice a day, twice right? A day. When the cows come in for right. milking, okay. Uh, and tell me about the quantity of grain that you're feeding as far as uh, what kind of rates. People often talk about a ratio of, of pounds of milk to pounds of grain. Yeah. Um, my heavy producers, I'll give them uh, 24 pounds. My lighter ones will get 12. Okay. So and that... sometimes, you know, when I grain, sometimes they'll get a handful or a half a scoop. You got to know your cows. Yeah. yeah you got to yeah, know your cows. Yeah. I mean, so you're in, it sounds like for the most part, in the range of, uh, say, four pounds, four to six, or maybe four right. to seven pounds of milk per pound right. of grain, okay, is what you're doing. And production-wise, I mean, you're, you're shipping probably, what, 20,000, 21,000 pounds of milk yep. uh, per cow per year. So a pretty yeah. good producing right. herd. Um, all Holsteins, yep. uh, essentially. Well, I got and, a couple black jerseys. And, and genetically, uh, genetically, our Holsteins, and, and really all our dairy breeds, unless we've really kind of uh, brought some genetics in uh, or selected some breeds that are a little bit different than right. what the industry is, is, is gone after, I mean, genetically, these animals have been bred to produce large quantities large of milk. Quality. And uh, one of the things that we see sometimes is, is folks really kind of minimizing grain input. It's pretty expensive right now. And, uh, you know, that's a strategy that some folks follow. If, they, if they've got the cows, the genetics, that are not really pushing that production. And when you have cows that are really bred to make a lot of milk, when they're short of energy, which the grain is really providing a lot of, I mean, what are the things that are gonna happen? I mean, I think we all know it. They're, they're gonna, gonna go down. They're gonna go drop. I, but, but they're, no gonna, lose, they're what, gonna lose body weight. No matter what yep. the price of milk is, no matter how bad the, the climate is, I always stick with the same rule of thumb with graining my cows. I mm -hmm. never, skimp on the cows with grain. You start skimping on your grain, you're gonna lose in the tank. You're losing you, the tank, you, but... If the milk prices are bad for two or three months, bite your bullet, feed them the way you should feed them. The milk prices will come back. Your production's right there where it should be. Yeah. If you start cheating them, you're cheating yourself down the road. They, they lose body weight, you can't you get them bred, do that. You and you lose production. Yeah, you yeah. gotta feed them with the grain all the time the same way. And anything you feed them, you and gotta feed them good because if you do not, they're not gonna produce. And, and we like to really kind of take a scientific approach. I mean, we've taken forage samples here, pasture samples. Right. Um, I mean, some people take a lot of samples, some people don't, but it's good to really kind of know what the quality is. Send it into the laboratory. We can uh, we enter all that information into a computer. We can calculate what those rates uh, ought to be or estimate them pretty darn close and uh, uh, that helps us to keep things in line. But I mean the, the, the one thing I guess uh, that, that you don't experience I know that some people do when you really short change them like you said they lose body they condition, lose body the condition. milk goes away, uh, reproductive performance goes Bad. down and you end up in the middle of winter time. Dry cows. Cows just aren't making any milk at all and you got bills to pay year-round. You're done. So you've got to uh, you, you got to feed the cows year round and take care of them year round. So you got to feed them. Yep. yep. Now, now, of course, there's a there's about as many ways of going about supplementing cows on pasture as there are farmers out there, and some folks have gone the route of feeding no grain uh, or very minimal amounts of grain. It's a strategy that some people follow. Today's dairy cows in the U.S. Uh, U.S. genetics are, are really not geared for that kind of a system. However, if you uh, uh, basically change the genetics in the herd. Uh, and some people have gone that way. Uh, they've gone, they've bred cows for uh, better reproductive performance. Those cows typically produce a little bit less milk. The demand for energy is a little bit lower. Uh, that's a strategy that some people follow. Um, I, I do know of, of one case where they're actually getting, it's an organic herd, they're actually getting a premium above and beyond the organic price for grass-fed. So it's organic grass-fed milk and they feed no grain. 
and, and they've really changed the genetics in their herd to kind of match up uh, the strategy that they're following on their farm. But I guess I would say for our, our mainstay genetics in the U.S., our dairy breeds that are really bred for productivity, uh, we've really got to meet the uh, nutritional needs of those cows uh, during the grazing season. Uh, and then we got to also remember that there's bills to get paid and there's income potential during the winter time as well. So we want to keep those cows on a pretty, pretty even uh, steel as we go right through the winter time, keep them producing well. Uh, pasture certainly provides some high quality forage, uh, allows us to minimize our grain feeding, but yet we need to be careful and, and be sure that uh, we meet the needs of those cows. So uh, a lot of different ways of going about it. So Alex uh, is, I, I guess he's the, He's the, he's the he's current the and the future of this operation here. One of the things that happened here in the last few years is that the farm has expanded a little bit. You added how many stalls? 20. 20 stalls uh, onto the operation here, which may not seem a lot, but before that, uh, you had how many stalls in the barn? 56. Okay, so take, taking the stalls from 56 to uh, 76, which is actually a pretty substantial substantial increase. So, so it's nice to see young people coming into the business and, uh, and, uh, and, and seeing that there's gonna be a future here in this operation here, keeping costs in line, using grazing as, as your yep. main strategy for summer feed from actually more than summer from spring through fall. Yep. Every year is a little bit different. You can see this is a super dry year this year. So it's, uh, it's been a lot more challenging and uh, you've had to feed the cows more stored feed uh, to uh, go along with the pasture to keep things going. So, uh, but we really want to thank you very much for taking the time with us to tell us a little bit about your operation and what you're doing. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.